Hey guys, it's Ramola Melik. Thanks for hanging out again with me today on episode number 13 of the Real Estate Vlog. Let's go. So we had a little accident yesterday. We were washing the coffee maker. The pot or the garage, I think is a technical name for it. And what had happened was that I put it too close to the edge of the countertop. Long story short, I'm going to go buy coffee this morning instead of make coffee. Also, I don't have any showings today, so I'm just going to wear a t-shirt. Hope you don't mind. I got my uh, McDonald's coffee because my coffee machine broke. All right, guys, on today's episode, we are going to... We don't have much to do today. No showings, no home inspections, no closings, writing no offers. It's been a couple of few slow days and I just don't know what's going on. However, before you go to the next video, I do want to talk about five things that I do to generate business when I'm slow. So maybe we'll call this video, you already know what it's called because I've already decided by the time you see this. So let's see, maybe something like five tips for generating business when you're slow. Five lead generation business when you're slow. Five things to do when you're slow and need to generate more business. Top five things to do when you're slow, when you need business and gotta make money. I don't know, let's do it. I guess I didn't really have anything planned today. I was just writing out my list of things uh, to do when you're slow in business. And one of my investors said, hey, out of curiosity how much is my home worth one of the ones that he bought that little two bedroom one bath rental if I wanted to sell it he's looking to uh, move some money around do some things so I am headed over there now to look at his house so a little sneak peek of a listing coming soon apparently or potentially coming soon uh, things kind of pop up all the time you just gotta be ready ready to go whenever possible to take every opportunity you can because sometimes opportunities come around often, sometimes they're few and far in between. Alright guys, so that uh, little quick listing appointment is uh, was a success. The, he really liked the numbers that I presented. He was pushing a little higher, but I kind of talked some sense into him. And uh, he is going to be done with it in about two weeks. It's a little, a little flip that uh, turned into a rental and now they've rented it for three or four actually like five years now and now he's thinking about selling it and moving on to some bigger projects so we're gonna have that listing coming in about a week maybe two the renters left it kind of uh jacked up and uh the four o'clock did get confirmed so hooray me and uh, so right now what i gotta do is run an errand and then I'm going to be at the property super early, so I might bring you guys along and show you guys uh, the property. Alright guys, just got the house a little early since this house is occupied. I don't want to show you guys the inside. Uh, I don't think the sellers would like that very much, but uh, check it out. It's right here. Alright, so it's actually a three bedroom, two bath, and it's in pretty good shape and it's under $100,000. Uh, does not look bad at all for the price. It's probably gonna have multiple offers as does everything in this price range But I'll let you know Alright guys, that was another one of those where the pictures do not do a good job representing What is actually going on in that house? So unfortunately, they didn't like it. Uh, I was kind of shocked at the price And the price was a little bit lower than I would expect for something three bedroom two bath that size but then we get in there it's got addition after addition it's got one room slopes this way one room slopes that way it feels like you're drunk in that house so uh, needless to say they're not going to jump on it but now we are headed back to the office all right guys thanks again for hanging out with me today i really appreciate it and it uh, looks like today's going to be a very short vlog but that's good so let me know if you prefer the long form vlog or the shorter vlog all right guys, so tip number one, the number one thing I do when I'm slow is I pick up that phone and I call the lenders. The lenders that I have relationships with, the lenders that I recommend uh, people go to, a lot of times what happens is you get really busy helping everybody else that's ready to buy a house 
and there could be one that never found a house that, that got pre-qualified and they just never found the place and maybe they just kind of put it off for now. So in order to revitalize, and those are great leads by the way because they're already pre-qualified or they were pretty close to being qualified and now they just came over the edge. Maybe some people needed to wait three months and you gave them to them to the lender three months ago and now you're following up. So sometimes those kinds of people you tend to forget about because they're not hot, heavy, calling you all day long. So that's tip number one, call the lender and try to pick up any business that was left on the table that you had forgot about because they never called you back or they didn't text you or you never went out and saw a property after you got qualified. All right guys, that brings us to tip number two. And number two seems kind of easy, but go through your CRM, your database, whatever you call it, your notebook, if that's what you do, and uh, go through and look at any people that are memorable. Maybe, maybe someone you were gonna show a house to but it never materialized, schedules didn't line up, and you kind of just stopped texting them or calling them. Maybe someone you have really good notes on they were looking to buy for, or their daughter was looking in a certain area, and you haven't followed up with them in a long time. Look for memorable people, things that you remember about them, and give them a call. Maybe it's time to stir up a little business. You can edit out or try to pipe out so it looks better. Seems like so I like I actually know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Alright guys, the number three thing I do when I need to drum up now business is I go straight to social media. Now one of the things I do on social media is I like to post properties and I'm not just talking about posting the pictures in the description. I'm talking about actually telling a story about the property. Wow, this house has three acres. It used to have a horse farm here. It used to be a it used to be a cattle ranch, um, you know, it's got the story behind it, or they just recently renovated. Maybe do a video. If you can, if you're this slow, there should be no excuse. Uh, go to your listing or go to a friend's listing, someone from your firm's listing, and just ask for permission and do a Facebook Live and just talk, walk around the house and say, could you picture yourself living in this house? Look at these granite countertops. Or even if it's a, if it's a low price property, say, wow, can you believe the investment opportunity buying this house for 60000 You could rent it for nine hundred. It needs $10,000 worth of work. There's ROI. You want to do a Facebook Live. For now, your MLS sheet, all the information is there. As you're walking through the rooms, just point out the obvious. Smooth ceilings, newer windows, hardwood floors, tile floors, re recently renovated. You don't have to know every detail about construction or building or material to walk through a house and point out the obvious. And yes, you're pointing out the obvious. It's really easy. You're just showing people a house. Now, once you get done posting that property, you can share it on your Facebook, you can download it, throw it on Instagram Live, you can put it on your story whatever you want to do with it and it'll remind people that you're in real estate so more people are going to see you're going to ask them hey do you know anybody looking for a home in this town or that town or in this price range or wherever you're at just make it personal engage your audience another thing that works really well with social media is telling stories about your clients now don't use any personal information a lot of times what i'll do is i'll get to a property and i'll pull out my phone and just tell a quick story about this these clients that i'm working and i don't have to get any personal information, I don't want to give too much information, but I just say, hey guys, so I'm showing these guys, their their credit wasn't that great six months ago, but they've been working on it and they did it, they got pre-qualified, now we're out here showing houses and so can you. If, you. if you think you have bad credit, let me know, I can put you in contact with a lender that's going to fix your, help you fix your credit or, you know, whatever. Alright guys, the number four thing that I do when I drum up business is I look for an open house. Now if I don't have any active listings that need an open house this weekend or for some reason I can't do an open house on my listings, I ask any one of my fellow EXP agents if they need anybody to do an open house on their properties and I do an open house. Now I know some people don't believe in open houses, some people don't think it works, but if you're slow, there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing open houses and getting out there in front of people that are potentially buyers or sellers. A lot of times the neighbors come to the open house and they want to they want to chat about the property and they want to see tell you that theirs is better and then you can say hey if you'd like I, we can find out i can run some comps do a cma meet you at your house after this open house and we'll go from there so a lot of times doing an open house brings not only buyers but also potentially sellers and if you don't have anything else going on there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing an open house and by the way guys if you're getting any kind of value out of this i would really appreciate if you 
hit the like button, ring the notification bell, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I would really appreciate the love. And uh, let me know in the comments, does this sound like it could be helpful? And let me know if you try it and you do get helpful. I would love to know if I help somebody. I think that would be amazing and that's kind of why I do these things. So uh, definitely let me know in the comments below if, what your thoughts of these things are. But yeah, let's get right into it. The number five thing that I do whenever I'm slow is I pick up the phone and I call some past clients. Now when I call, I'm not calling to get their business. I'm not calling to ask them to sell their house. I'm not calling to, to ask them if they have any friends that are looking to buy or sell. I literally just call them and have a three minute conversation like hey how you doing and uh, just how's the weather how's the house holding up how's the family how's your little dog and go from there and what happens is number one you stay fresh in their mind so they might run into someone the next day at work who's actually looking to buy and like oh yeah Ramon's a cool guy he just called me yesterday why don't you give him a call and you know that could work out uh, also they may have someone already in their family that's looking for a house and you're just there keeping that relationship so you never know what that could lead to and that was tip number five call your past leads check up on them you're, you're doing a great job being a customer service oriented realtor and they may have someone that that's looking to buy or sell a home all right guys so that's the end of the video five tips five things i do when i'm slow when i need to drum up now business hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for staying to the end and i'll see you guys on the next vlog